Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. I hope you're doing well. You enjoyed your Sunday. Um, no doubt you will have seen or you will have at least heard that Liam Paro scored a big upset over Subriel Mateus over in Puerto Rico, went into the guy's backyard. Mateus had previously stopped five of his opponents by forcing them to quit. He was a red hot favourite and Paro produced a magnificent performance to become an IBF uh, super lightweight champ. Now, that, that was obviously disappointing for the Puerto Rican crowd, but one guy who didn't let them down was um, Alfredo Santiago, who'd been inactive for two years, um, came into the into his fight with uh, Angel Fierro of Mexico. So it's always a good little tussle when you get Puerto Rico versus Mexico. A bit of rivalry there, to say the least. Um, and Santiago hadn't fought for two years. Uh, 14 wins with six KOs, two defeats, one by stoppage, one by decision. And he was he was the underdog because um, back in 2021, which was two fights ago, he, he'd been stopped in nine rounds by Ricardo Nunes. He'd also lost a 12-round decision for a WBC lightweight title to uh, Devin Haney. Um, and he was considered, I think, because of the inactivity, even though he was in his backyard, um, Angel Ferreira came in with 22 wins, 17 KOs, one, one defeat, which was just a majority eight-round decision back in 2020. Um, bad day at the office, probably. Fierro, 25 years old, um, and I'm not sure exactly how, how old Santiago is, but he was certainly the taller fighter, 5 foot 11 uh, to 5 foot 7. Um, Fierro, um, orthodox fighter. I think they're both, yeah, they were both orthodox. That's right. Both orthodox fighters. But Fierro, because of, uh, because of his knockout ratio and he'd been busier and he, you know, he, he just looked the part recently a, a bit more. Um, he was considered to be the favorite in this fight and Santiago sprang. Well, I suppose you would call an upset, not a massive upset, but Santiago boxed brilliantly. Let's put it that way. Um, taller range of fighter used that but at the same time didn't just box off the back foot at times he was clocking Fierro and to start with uh, I mean the first round I gave to San Diego it was like whoa you know can he keep this up uh, it was a 10, 10 rounder not a 12 round this wasn't for a belt or it was for one of those WBO trinkets um, but San Diego um, he, he mixed it up like I say he would box you know bang 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 with a jab lots of Lots of slipping and sliding, side um, side to side, kept Fierro from setting himself for the power punches. Um, on the occasions when they were exchanging, San Diego was matching Fierro. He actually stung him a couple of times in some of the later rounds. I had him, I don't want to say stunned him, but but Fierro was rattled and um, he was out, essentially he was outworked. And for a guy to be off for two years to take inspiration from being in his backyard. You know, Puerto Rico against a Mexican. I'm here. I'm going to give it absolutely everything. He had, he displayed what Mateus lacked because Mateus, I don't think there's any doubt that Mateus took Paro lightly. That's not to take anything away from Paro. Paro, magnificent performance. But probably with all those stoppage victories, all those retirements, I'm, I'm a bad, bad man. And I've got to be honest, I bought into it. I thought Mateus was definitely one of the baddest men on the planet. Um, he kind of took Paro lightly and didn't do what he should have done, didn't prepare. You know, the old cliche, failure to prepare is preparation to fail. Um, for San Diego, he prepared all right. He was up for this fight in a, in a big way and showed some very, very good skills, some real slick skills um, and some good heart as well. And Fierro, I think, was injured at, at one point because at the end of the fight, he was sitting on his stool and he was, then he's hobbling around the ring. So that probably impacted, I don't know when he was injured, but that impacted on his, um, on his performance, no doubt. But um, if you look at when San Diego fought Devin Ain, he didn't win around. Um, you know, it was, I think he was actually down as well. He was on, he was on the floor, one of the middle rounds, but uh, not a bit of it this time. He took on a very good fighter. Fierro came in with 22 wins, one defeat and two draws. And he, he's jumping up now. He's jumping up the rankings. And, I mean, this was a super lightweight fight. So you know how stacked that division is. Um, I wonder if if uh, promoters can lure Liam Paro back 
to Puerto Rico to fight Alfredo Santiago, that would be a good fight. That would be a good fight because Santiago is a very different style to Mateus, a lot busier. He'll stand in front of Paro. We know paro has got guts by the bucket, um, very mentally strong indeed. But Santiago showed a lot in this fight. I was very, very impressed indeed. So if you didn't see this fight, it's, it was on the undercard of, like I say, Mateus and Paro. It's on zone if you want to go and have a look at it. Very, very good fight. I enjoyed it a lot. Quite exciting. Good atmosphere as well from the crowd because obviously you've got, you know, like I say, the Puerto Rican versus the Mexico. But go and have a Mexican fighter. But go and have a look. See what you think and let me know what you think. And um, yeah, as always, thank you for your time. If you like this video and you could hit the like button, that'd be great. Subscribe. Spread the word about Joe Stunner Boxing. Hit that subscription button. Cost you, cost you nothing. Takes a second. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'll catch you later and bye for now.